Okay, so we're going to graph a funny looking trig function. We have this function y equals negative 2 times the cosine of the quantity x minus pi halves plus 4. Okay, that's sort of a lot to look at. Um, so all of these trig functions come sort of in the same flavor. They're all of the form y equals a times the sine or cosine. I'm looking at cosine right now. So cosine of b times x minus h plus k. Okay, so there's a lot of constants there. Um, so you have to know what this a value does to the graph, what the b value does to the graph, what the h value does to the graph, and what the k value does to the graph. So a is the amplitude. which is half of the distance from the maximum to the minimum. It's the distance from the x-axis to the maximum. Uh, so if your a value is negative, then you have to reflect the graph over the line y equals k. Okay. Um, 2 pi divided by the b value is the period. Uh, H is your horizontal shift. And K is the vertical shift. Okay. So, if you know these, then the function Y equals negative 2 times the cosine of X minus pi halves plus 4 becomes increasingly easier to sort of work out in your brain how you're supposed to graph this, you know that the amplitude is going to be 2, uh, but it's a negative value, so maybe I should say that the absolute value of A is equal to the amplitude. So the ampli amplitude is, is 2, and since our A value is negative, we know that we're going to have to reflect our graph over the line Y equals to 4. Okay. 2 pi divided by B is the period. Our B value is 1, so our period is 2 pi, which is the normal period for a cosine function. Our horizontal shift, we're going to shift pi halves in the positive direction, and we're going to shift four units also in the positive direction. Okay, so what does this look like? Both the sine and the cosine graphs have five key points. Get our axes here. Okay. So we know we're going to shift this thing up five, uh, four units, and the amplitude is two. So I'll call this four. So I mean, this is two, and this is six. So we know that our function is going to sort of oscillate in that region. Our period is, is 2 pi over 1, so our b value is 1. So uh, since b equals 1, then our period is 2 pi. Okay. So we have pi halves, pi, 3 pi halves, 2 pi. 5 pi halves, 3 pi, negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi halves, that'll be enough. <clears throat> okay, so I'll, I'll, point, I'll plot the points in red where our function would be initially if there was no reflection and no horizontal shift of pi halves. Well, it would start up here at 6. Then at pi halves, it would be at 4. At pi, it would be at 2. At 3 pi halves, it would be back at 4. 
and at 2 pi, it would be back at 6. And that would be one full cycle. The full cycle would come, it would come up from here, go down, and then come back up, and then go back down, and in that fashion. But we're going to shift all of these points pi halves units to the right. So now in blue, I'm going to take all of these points and I'm going to shift them pi halves units. So I have a point there, got a point there, 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 and there. Okay, so I shifted all those red points pi halves units. Now, I've taken care of the vertical shift, I've taken care of the horizontal shift. <coughs> my, I know my amplitude is 2, but since my the value of A is negative, I've got to reflect these over the line Y equals to 4, which means this point is reflected over the line Y equals 4, that's here. This point reflected over the line Y equals 4 stays there. So that this point is reflected over the line y equals 4, so that goes up to 6. This stays where it is, and this comes down to 2. So what does the graph look like? Well, connect these dots. And this is the graph of y equals negative 2 times the cosine of x minus pi has quantity of that plus 4.